Hi everyone, and thanks for joining me. Today we have another embroidery video. We're going to be making these vaccinated pouches. These are for your COVID vaccination cards. You can see I've made a copy of mine and blacked it out. And that's probably what I will actually do is make a copy of my real card and put that in here. Um, and I'll put the, the actual card away for safekeeping, but this way I can have this with me should I need to show it. So these are super easy in the hoop projects to make. I digitized this file. You are going to need a swivel clip and I use metal snaps on this. I'll use cam snaps in the video. I think more people have those, but I did make a couple different varieties. You can see this one and it just has this clear pocket on the back. I had another one that I made without the snap, but I wanted to make sure that the card can't fall out. So with the snap, it's not going to fall out and it also gives you a better way to um, hook it. And then here's one with a glittery vinyl. So today I thought we would do one with um, cork and then I'm also just going to do one on a white vinyl. So I'll be using the multi-needle and the single needle machine. We're gonna do the white vinyl on the Janome 500E single needle machine, and we'll be doing the cork on the Rakoma EM1010 multi-needle. It's the exact same process, the exact same instructions. The only difference is on the single needle, you're going to be stopping to change your threads. On the multi-needle, you don't have to stop to change your threads, but there's, there's six steps to this. So you're still going to be stopping to add your back and your pocket and all of that stuff. So without further ado, let's get started. And I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you the prep first. So let's take a look at what we need for this project. You're going to need your instruction sheet and your printout. Uh, this is available on my blog. You can find the link to that in the description below. It's a free file. This is an in the hoop embroidery design. I've got it in several different formats, but I will include this PDF which gives you all of the instructions. I tried to make this as simple as possible for those of you who may be new to in the hoop designs. So on this first page, you have an actual size printout of the finished design. If you want, you can cut that out just to make things a little bit easier as I have on this one so that I can center it on this hoop for my single needle. Down here, I have actually put all of the directions for you. Step five is the stitch the upper half together and then add the pocket material. Step six, stitch your pocket, you're finished. On the bottom, I have the size that you need your material. So your base materials, the front and the back are going to be six inches high by five inches wide. And that's because you have this tab. And then your pocket material for the back, is going to be your clear vinyl. You need a piece at least three and a half inches high by five inches wide. I'm using a 12 gauge clear vinyl. I will try to link everything I can in the description below the video. And then on this one, it actually has your step out. So I'm gonna use this to program my machine, my multi-needle for my color steps. If you're using a single needle machine, this will just help you know which color's coming next. You can also see that on your machine. So I have hooped a piece of tear away in my Mighty Hoop. This is going to be for the multi-needle machine. And I've hooped a piece of tear away in the hoop for my single needle machine. So both are going to start the same there. Again, we have a piece of cork that's going to be the front of my project. We have a piece of um, felt that's going to be the back of my project because once the card's in there you're not going to really see it so I use felt. You can use whatever you want if you want to use another piece of cork or another piece of leather you can do that. It just tends to stick to your machine. I like using the felt on the back side when possible. This again is a 12 gauge clear vinyl. You can find this in Walmart. Uh, it's on a roll. You can find this in Joann's, Michael's. You can also find this like if you get bedding and it comes in a package, um, you can use that vinyl. You just don't wanna get something too thin. We are going to be putting a snap on it so it needs to be thick enough to handle that snap or your cam snap. Again, this is a 12 gauge vinyl, that's what I recommend. And then this is optional, but I find it very, very helpful. This is just a simple piece of wrapping tissue paper cut 
slightly larger than your project. And that's just going to help once we put this on not to stick to your machine. So I'll show you how we're going to utilize that. So for each project, you need a front material, a backing material, your clear vinyl, and then optional, a piece of tissue paper. Go ahead and hoop your tear away and we will get started. So you can see there's my placement stitch. Here is my vinyl. I have sprayed it with the 505 adhesive. I'm just going to lift up my presser foot, pull that tail out of my way, and make sure that I'm covering the entire design. If we look at the display over here or look at our printout, the next step it's going to stitch is our satin stitch around the edge. So we're going to go ahead and let that go. So the next step is the check box. I'm going to do this all in the same color, but if you want to do different colors, you're going to change your thread now. We're going to put the foot down and hit start. All right, so the next step tells us it is the word vaccinated in the check mark. Again, if you want to change colors, change your color. I hope you're enjoying seeing the same project on both machines. I won't do this every time. It does take a lot of effort to get everything to uh, line up when I'm trying to edit the video. But I did want to show you that even though I'm showing projects on the multi-needle, you can still do them on the single needle machines. The only difference is that you will be stopping to change your thread colors, whereas on the multi-needle, I have it all programmed. Once you've stitched that check mark, you're going to take your piece of felt. Again, you're going to spray it with your 505 adhesive. Oops, didn't cut her. There we go. You're going to turn it over and place this so that it totally covers your design. Let me see if I can zoom out a little bit. There we go. So we just place the felt so that we are completely covering our design. Place it back on. And you're going to stitch the next step. trimmed. I'm going to remove it from the hoop, or from not from the hoop, from the machine. My thread cutter is not cutting very well today. I'm going to turn it over and you're going to take your clear piece of vinyl 
and you're going to place it so that the top of the vinyl comes just lightly over the top of your stitches and we're going to tape that into place just like that so it's you can see where the curves are it's just slightly above that you want to try to get that straight of course i'm going to trim this up so that i don't create another mess then i'm going to take my piece of tissue paper and i'm just going to tape I'm sure that didn't move, which it did. I tape my tissue paper and tape that down. And that's just going to help everything glide smoothly and not stick to my machine. Grab another piece of tape. Let's put it back on. I'm going to stitch that final stitch. we're almost finished. So once you've gotten all of your stitches completed, that was the final step. You're going to go ahead and remove it from the machine and bring it over to your desktop. So from here, everything is exactly the same, no matter whether you made it on a single needle or a multi-needle. What I like to do first before I remove it from the hoop is trim it up and remove my tissue paper. So I'm just going to flip it over and this tissue paper just very simply tears off and you want to trim up any loose threads from your tie offs on the final step. And just a little tip for those who use the mighty hoops, when you take them apart, if you put the bottom on the top and put the white sides together, they come apart very easily. It's not so hard to pry apart and you don't pinch your fingers. So that's just a little side tip for you if you're using the Mighty Hoops. What I like to do next is remove my tear away. You don't have to, you can leave it in there if you want. I just find the less layers I have to cut around, the better and neater things look, but that's totally up to you. You do what works for you. So now you want to have a pair of sharp scissors. I highly recommend it, these Kai scissors. I will link them in the description below. They are so sharp and they make trimming this up very easy. So you're going to trim about an eighth of an inch or so around the outer perimeter. You want to make sure that the less that you open and close your scissors, the smoother your uh, cuts are likely going to look. Also, try moving the project and not your hand with the scissors. That also helps you have smoother cuts. By far, I am a lefty and I have learned to cut with my right hand, but I am the world's worst cutter. So those are just some tips that I have learned along the way and caught in other uh, videos that have helped me have a smoother cut. So again, you wanna trim just about an eighth of an inch. Make sure you don't get too close to your stitches. And of course, you're gonna take your time. This is for video's sake, so I'm just gonna go pretty quick here. Now we need to add our cam snap. So here's your pocket. Your cam snap's going to go on the top and the bottom. Wow, I, that's really crooked. Let me straighten that up a little bit. Just bugging me. Those curves get me every time. Your cam snap set comes with a awe or a pokey tool or whatever you call it. You're just going to go down about a quarter to a half an inch from the top. You have plenty of wiggle room, so it doesn't have to be exact. Center it and poke a hole right through all of your layers. Your cam snaps come with three different pieces. There is a piece that looks like a tack. You're going to need two of those. And then there is a male and a female end. There's the male. That's the female. And it doesn't matter which one you're going to use where, but you're going to start with one of your tack pieces 
and place it so the tack side is up. It's the same side as the front of your design. You're gonna flip it over and take either the male or the female and place it right on top. I am using the male or the female piece here and it kind of looks like if a cup, whoa, kind of looks like a cup. So you would want the bottom of the cup facing the felt and the hollow part facing up. You're gonna put the black part of your pliers against the back part of the tack and squeeze. Now we're going to poke a hole into this vinyl. This is why I recommend the 12 gauge vinyl. You wanna make sure that it can withstand the snap. I kind of just press that snap down and you can see it kind of makes a hole or an indent and that kind of tells me exactly where that hole needs to be. Once you've poked the hole, you're going to put the tack on the inside with the pointed end of the tack facing out and place it right through that hole so it looks like this. You're going to take your opposite side. This time I'm using the male so the uh, little cup is facing up. And we are going to go ahead and put the black side of the snap against the tack side. Oh, came apart. Line that back up. So again, you wanna put the black part inside the pocket on the back of the tack, and then this part on that side. And squeeze. And there you have your snap. So you could add just a split ring or the swivel lobster clasp, whatever works for you. I'm going to use these swivel lobster clasps. They work really well and I like that they spin and I can take them on and off easily whether I want to put it on a lanyard or in my purse or on a keychain, but super easy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Again, this file can be found on my blog. I will link it in the description below. You're free, welcome to use it. I have it in all different uh, formats. So hopefully there's one there that works for you. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like subscribe and share. Don't forget to click that bell so that you're notified every time there is a new video. Thanks so much for watching and never stop making. Bye-bye.